Your voice, your opinion, your community. Fact TV, free speech, protected. And so, start with Genesis chapter 2. Um, I just was led by the Spirit to look this up, so I just started messing around. Um, I understand Greek uh, out of the Septuagint, but I did look in the Hebrew. In chapter 2, God made man. And it's interesting, in chapter 26, he commanded him to replenish the earth. Because there was a world order prior to us, it was destroyed in Genesis 1-2. God recreates the earth, puts us on it. We're the main feature of it. But Adam was alone, and this is how God looked at it. Um, we start down here in verse... Um, I studied it out of the different Bible. Okay. In verse 18 of chapter 2, And the Lord God said, It's not good that man should be alone, and I will make him a helpmeet for him. That's interesting because God commanded Adam to replenish the earth, but how was he going to do that? Because in Genesis 5, 2, it says Adam was both male and female. And so God did the first operation, and, and this is very interesting. And it jumps down to verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh instead thereof in a rim which the Lord God taken from man made he woman a man with a womb and brought her unto the man and Adam said now this is bone of my bones flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken from out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh and they both were naked and the man and his wife were not ashamed the word made there is not bara or asfa it's actually panna, pan on, I think that's how you would say. And that's interesting. It means that God made woman to build. And, and when you dig into the Hebrew, it means she was made to build a home. She was made to build a family. That was her, uh, in the eyes of God, he wanted to replenish the earth. He made the woman to be the precious housing of that child for the first nine months. Then the let me see if I say this right, breastfeeding. And so uh, that's a closeness that a mom gets with the child. They're bonded in that. And so there's a uniqueness to that. And that's that word God made uh, right there in that verse that he made he a woman. And the word help me means protector, surrounder, and aid, and a helper. And so we're going to see a couple different women today. The first one, let's go to Hebrews 11. We know the story of Eve, and um, as a helpmeet, she was to help him fulfill the ministry that God gave to Adam. But we know the story. The devil came in and deceived her. Adam knew the truth, so he high treasoned because he loved the woman more than the will of God, and that happens sometimes. And so Eve listened to the wrong voice. She led the man. I love that Greek movie. It said, he's the head, but I'm the neck that turns the head. I love that. And so turned Adam to walk away from the command of God up above before she was created out of the man. God gave, her, gave him a command to keep the garden, to subdue it, to dominate it, to keep that dominion that he gave to him as the God of this world order. But we know the story. They sinned and Satan stole that dominion. So God began to restore that. And the first way he did that, up to chapter 12 of Genesis, he calls a man Abram and Sarah from Syria, and they come. And it's interesting to me, and we'll take this out of Hebrews 11, 11, And it says, through faith, or the same faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Abram had the call, but Sarah, since she was married to Abram as one, she was a part of that call. And 
what she was to do was to aid him to help him. And we see that she made some mistakes, but she loved him. I mean, Sarah loved him so much that she called him Lord. I mean, that wouldn't go across in America, you know. Plus, I'd say, Brenda, please, please. <laughs> but anyway, she loved him, and that's why she wanted him to be so successful that she offered him, her mistress, her handmaid, and conceived Ishmael. And we're still having that Middle East war going on still today over the father of Abraham. And so she made those mistakes, but when God calls a man to the ministry, the woman is a big part of that ministry or that call. She's not left out. And so Abram, God told him to change his name to Abraham and call those things that be not as being. And Abram struggled with that for 24 years, and Sarah had to live with that in the same tent. His struggles, his fights, his wrestles, and he wasn't a happy camper all the time. And then when she opened herself up to help him, to protect him, to aid him, and gave him the mistress, there was a lot of tension came into the tent because she got envious that she had, could conceive and she could not. So in Genesis chapter 18, God comes to them because God can't move where there's no faith. And so God had to get Sarah over into faith, so he begins to deal with her. And in that verse, it said she began to have the same faith. And I never saw that because we always major on Abraham, but Sarah had to come into that oneness with Abraham so God could move, so that God could fulfill the dream. Sarah gave birth to the seed of God, which represents Jesus of Nazareth. It represents his humanity. It represents the nation of Israel. Through her flesh came Isaac. Then out of Isaac came Jacob. And then Jacob had 12 boy, boys, became the 12 tribes of Israel. And when uh, Jacob was on his deathbed, by the manifestations of the spirit called the word of wisdom, he laid hands on each one of his boys and prophesied the will of God and the purpose of God for each one of those tribes. And over Judith came the scepter. Out of him would come a king or the ruler of his people. And that's why we get over there, the King David comes into play then. This all was birthed because Sarah had to join her husband in the call of God and join him and fulfill what God wanted them to do. And so Matthew 1 begins out, the generations of Abraham and David all came out of the womb of Sarah. It was the natural seed. The natural seed that came out of Sarah was Israel, and out of Israel came Judith, and out of Judith came David, and out of David came Jesus. And Jesus was born through that faith. The same faith that created the world order was the same faith that uh, Sarah received. And she had, and I'll go back over that. But I wanted to see Genesis 18. These services are always harder for me because I have to peg it down to something. In Genesis 18, God comes to Abram. And uh, let me see if I find it here. I shouldn't have studied in a different translation. And so we'll go to, um, we'll just start at verse 9. And they said unto her, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent which was behind him. And Abraham said, And Sarah, old and well stricken to age, and it ceased to be made, ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of woman, women. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself and saying, After I'm old and waxed old, I will give pleasure to my Lord, being old also. And the Lord said unto Abram, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety bear a child which I am old? Is anything too hard for you for the Lord? I hold on to that, all right? 
Because that's not what it says it in the Greek. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou did laugh. Sarah's faith bind with Abraham's faith. And Solomon said two is a, a positive thing. Three is even better. On your way back to Hebrews, stop at Romans 4, and I want to show you what her faith did. Her faith allowed Abraham to change his name from Abram to Abraham. And because she hooked up with Abraham and protected him and loved him and aided him, look what God was able to do. In verse 17 of Romans 4, it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed. Even God who quickened the dead. The dead there is Sarah's womb. She could not have a child. So when Sarah came over into faith, the power, now go with me to Hebrews 11, the power of God could recreate that womb to bear a seed. And this is what Hebrews 11 says about Sarah's faith. And I think of that a lot of times. I'm here because of Brenda. I got uh, off track. I don't want to go over to the beaten horse. But I was running hard and I was running dark. And she stood in the gap for me. And through her faith brought me home to answer the call of God. Through Sarah, Abraham was able to change his name from Abram to Abraham, call those things be not, and quicken that womb for her to have a child to honor the promise of God and her husband, Abram. Abram wanted a child more than anything else. He said, I got the gold, I got the silver, I got the cattle, I got the camels, I got the donkeys, I got the men servants, the maid servants, I got the land, but God, all I really wanted was a seed, a child. And so in Hebrews 11, 11, it says this. It says, um, look what it says, through faith, or the same faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Now in the Greek, what it says is she had the foundation to conceive the beginning of God's seed. Think about that. She birthed Jesus of Nazareth. She birthed the humanity through her loins, Abram and her, came Jesus of Nazareth. God became flesh. God did not give birth to them till they both were in faith. And it's interesting to me that as soon as Sarah came over into faith, Abraham changed his name, and God quickened that womb, made it alive to conceive the seed that God promised them. And it took them 24 years to line up with God's promise. And so don't get discouraged if faith isn't exactly where you want it today. It will continue to increase. She was delivered of a child when she was past age. And this is interesting because she judged him faithfully who had promised. The word judged there means that she got a hold of the spiritual intellect of God. She had to quit looking at herself in the natural and see herself the way God saw her. And the only way to do that is through faith. It's the only way to do that is through the Word of God. You have to see yourself through God's Word. Remember, the word logos means how God communicated to us his intellect, his reason, his facts, his truth. So Sarah, she would examine and by the Spirit of God come to realize within her mind, renew her mind, to the promise of God. What was the promise? He promised Abram that through his loins all nations and all generations would be blessed. We're a part of that thinking of Sarah in that tent when she laughed within herself, but out of that God dealing with her produced faith within her to hook up with her husband so that they could birth a child. The seed would produce Jesus. Think about that. And she in her mind renewed it to God's promise 
and found him to be faithful to that promise. But God had to wait not only on Abram, but on Sarah. So God brings a woman into a man's life to join together to accomplish something, a vision in this earth. Marriages are strengthened when both have a vision together and want to walk that out by faith. And so it can be a spiritual thing, it can be a natural thing, it can be a mental thing, but God has designed a woman, especially for a man, to hook up with him, to help him to fulfill the calling that God... Because when there's not that equally yoked, there's, there's a lot of trouble in the camp. Because darkness can't dwell with light. Christ can't dwell with Baal. I mean, it, it, there's a concept there. And so God had to wait on both of them. And through that faith, Sarah promised. Now, and the when she's taken of is in chapter 10, 23, and I'll move on to the next one. Let us hold fast the confession. This is Hebrews 10, 23. She learned to hold on to the confession of her faith she began to call Abram, Abraham. She began to call those things that be not as being. She was calling Abram, Abraham, which means the father of many children. And both of them, she was 89 and he was 99. <laughs> and they were past age, a time to have a child. But the power over there in Hebrews 11, 11 the power of the Spirit of God quickened that womb for them to get birth. But listen, to she, she hauled fast to the confession. In the Greek, it's hope, the promise of God, without wavering. He is faithful to what he promised. The word promise, real quick, means that God obligated himself to us by his word. The promises that he spoke out of his spirit. And that's going to come into the play in the next woman. Because you've got to understand that when God obligated himself to his word, how do you obligate it in my generation before generation of lawsuits and, and all the garbage we have today? It was a word and a handshake. And once you gave your word to somebody, you were obligated to that person to fulfill your word. Once God gave his promise to Abram that you will be Abraham, the father of many children, both of them had to hook up to that. They both had to renew their mind to that, and they both had to begin to call those things to be not as if, and that binding were two on earth as touching anything, it shall be done of their Father which is in heaven. And Jesus talked about that because he came through that kind of faith, all right? Then in the next woman, she's called and he's not. <laughs> and so I see special in this. Turn with me to Luke chapter 1. God calls women to a specific task in the church. Paul went on as he learned things in the spirit because he even said in the Corinthian church, women, you're so illiterate of the truth of God's word. Don't interrupt the services. Ask your husband when you get home. But through the process of his ministry over 30 some years, he began to understand that in the flesh there is neither male or female. God does not deal through our natural man. He deals through our spirit man. God is a spirit. So when God deals with you, he's going to deal with you through your spirit. And he most likely, 100%, will deal with you through a promise of his word. His word is forever. He will never change. He's the same. So here, this woman, and you know who it is, she now is going to birth the seed of Christ. The spiritual part of Jesus. And notice that Sarah births a nation. She births a 12 tribe uh, group of people, eventually went into Egypt and they come out in multitudes. But Mary, it, she's birthing the new covenant, deals only with Mary, not with a generational people, not with a nation. Mary had to receive the call that God put into her life by faith. And I want to show you that. Because Mary now is going to redeem what Eve did in the garden. 
Sarah was a big part because she allowed Jesus to be birthed or God to become flesh so that she could, through her womb, clothe that Jesus, the humanity of our God, when he came man, and also receive the seed of God within that womb that she clothed, which became Christ, the Messiah. And so it's unique. And they both had to receive it by faith. So in the first woman, she's helping her husband. But in this one, Mary is on her own. Matter of fact, Joseph, she goes, and God confirmed talking to her. I'll get to that in a moment. She leaves for three months. And she comes home with a bun and a, bu bun and a burner or whatever that is. She comes back pregnant. And Joseph sees her in the natural. God called Mary. God didn't call Joseph. And Joseph, not understanding what's going on in the realm of the spirit, he gets frustrated. And he wants to privately divorce her because he loved her. And so what God had to do was come and explain to Joseph Mary's call. So I'm just going to say to you women, if you feel God called you, and your husband's not sure about you. Sit still and pray that his eyes of his understanding get it, gets understanding of who you are. Because if God called you and he placed something inside your spirit to accomplish, he wants that unity of the marriage to fulfill that call. He called us both male and female. He called us one. We consummate that oneness through sexual intercourse. And so it's a unique thing. So Joseph wanted to divorce her. He wanted to get discard her. He, he was hurt. He was crushed. But Mary's the only one that got the vision. Mary's the one that saw into the spirit. She understood what was going on. Joseph was left out. And so the spirit of God had to reveal through an angel that situation. So in Luke 1... In 35, um, we see the greeting in verse 30. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, thou hast found favor with God. You're called of God. And the word calling is a word favor. We won't get into that today. And so down in verse 34, Mary says to the angel, How shall this be, saying, I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto the Holy Ghost, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And the holy thing which is in thee shall be born, and he shall be called the Son of God. Behold, she, he gives her a word of knowledge. Your cousin is pregnant in her old age. And there was the word barren again. When we saw the word barren in the Old Testament with Sarah, we see now the word barren in Elizabeth and Zacharias. And the next verse in 30 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. That's the same thing God told Sarah is anything too hard for the Lord. It's the exact same wording in the Greek in the Old Testament as in and not. And what it's saying there, every word that God speaks by the power of his spirit will come to pass. When we go over to Romans 10, 17, and you say faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, in the Greek is hereimatos Christu. In other words, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, the word of God deep in your spirit, that then you walk out on that promise. So he's telling Mary that by the power of God's word release, that nothing shall come back void, it shall accomplish what he sent it for. When God speaks and you hook up to what he speaks, it is absolutely impossible that it will not come to pass. So I tell you, husbands and wives, if you want to move in something, be still to hear from the Spirit of God that's sealed into you, that measure of the anointing that I teach a lot, that's sealed into you through the new birth, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, through the word of God, then begin to confess that over your life. So let's look at this. I have a few minutes left. It said, she answered, and Mary said, behold, verse 38, 
The, the Spirit of God showed us. The Spirit of God's going to do it. All you have to do is hold on. Mary said, Behold, the handmaid, that means I'm inferior to you, Lord. I don't have all the answers. I can't do what you're asking me to do. I have to totally trust on you. Joseph had, no, Joseph had nothing to do with this. This was her call. And the seed that was going to be placed in her is called Christ, the Holy One. And that's an individual thing. When you accept Christ, that's an individual, personal thing. You accept Jesus Christ alone. You yourself get connected with God as Father through this seed. And so the handmaid of the Lord, be it according to your word. In the Greek, that's an optative. But it has the same wording that says, God forbid, but it doesn't have the not on it. So what this is saying, Mary is saying, I am so submissive to what you're asking me to do that I sacrifice myself to your call. I sacrifice myself to what you want to do with my life. And I love this. Think about this. God could have not moved or come to this earth without Sarah's faith and Christ to manifest his ministry and his life, his death, burial, and resurrection could not have come unless of Mary's faith. And I see very much importancy of a woman in both of those situations. And so women, you are important to God. There's neither male or female in the realm of the spirit. All God sees is the spirit. And there, the spirit is always uh, neuter. Is that how you say that? Neither male or female, okay? I'm sorry. Anyway, it goes on, but it's not an it. Some people will say it. It's not an it. He is masculine because God the Father, God the Son, the Holy Spirit. Be it according to your word. According there is a kata. The word there is an accusative. And what that means is Mary's saying to God, according to the standard of your spoken word or according to the law of how you move by faith, when you speak, when you spoke that to me by an angel, by the Spirit of the living God, I say do it. I give you permission to put that seed into my womb according to the law of your spoken word because nothing that you speak is, in, is impossible not to come to pass. Is that right? It's possible. Everything's possible, those that believe. So Mary is conversing there and the angel departed for her. And the last part I want to say before closing is in uh, 45. She comes to Elizabeth and she knows by the word of knowledge she's pregnant. They didn't have telephone, they didn't have email, they didn't have tweet, Twitter, or whatever. Nothing of that. I don't even know if they had postmen. And so how did Mary know that? Mary knew that by the Spirit of the living God. She said, your cousin, Elizabeth, is pregnant. So she goes there. And it's interesting what the Spirit of God says through Elizabeth. For time's sake, in verse 44, Lo, as the voice of thy greeting sounded in my ears, my babe, John the Baptist, leaped in my womb for joy. That connection was by the Spirit of the living God. And that connection was by the faith of Mary. And, and, and that's intriguing to me. And so, blessed is she that believes, for they shall be performance of those things which were ter told her from the Lord. So Mary, 14, some say 15, 16, some say up to 21. I've always been taught 14. Most scholars agree with that. She's a virgin. She's young. God comes to her, greets her by an angel and by faith. She receives what God says. She gives her womb over to God to permit him to put the seed of God into her. And Mary, Elizabeth is confirming that operation or that accomplishment through the Spirit of God. She responds back to Mary to confirm her faith through prophecy and through the word of wisdom. And so we see the Spirit of God moving in these situations. So women, you are important. 
God has you here for a reason. Sometimes you might be called to do something without your husband, but I ask you, and this is my, me speaking alone, to be still and wait for your husband to understand. Ask the Spirit of God to show him why you're doing what you are doing. So blessed is she that believes. Blessed are those that walk in faith, for there shall be a formance of those things that were promised of God. So husbands, if you're not with your wives, or wives, if your husband's not with you, continue to pray, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18, that God uh, will open the eyes of your husband that he'll come to the Lord. I just read this, and I wish I could have wrote this down. This is my conclusion. When this man prayed for his wife, or the wife prayed for him, I, I need to go back and read this over. But he passed away, or she passed away, and about two weeks a month after he passed, she got, or he got born again. So God hears your prayers. Take the promises of God, even concerning your family, and speak them into the realm of the Spirit. Quit doing it in the natural. Speak it so that the Spirit of God has something to move upon. He will do the convicting, convincing, exposing, and rebuking, and trust that he will bring an accomplishment of performance to his word. Walk it out by faith. Don't get discouraged to what you see. Don't get discouraged to what you hear. But know that your faith is on God's promise. God promised he obligated to his word. Once you have faith, and believe his word, he then has to obligate himself to bring that to pass. And God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. He is the truth. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, this morning for your word. I thank you for the church. And I thank you for women. I thank you for my mom. I struggled with my mom for years. A few years ago, I wrote a letter, an apology for the life that I did in front of her and I could imagine my mom and dad as they read that letter they waited almost 60 years to hear me say I was sorry father the things that they instilled into my life has made me who I am and father I just want to encourage all the women and all the moms and all the wives that if they hold on to your promises like Sarah did and Mary did you will perform their desire of their heart to the fullness. Again, the Spirit of God said, do not look into the natural. Do not go by what you see. Do not go by what you hear, smell, touch, or etc. But know that your faith is based upon his word. And his word he obligated himself to. If you will now obligate yourself to his promises, and begin to speak them into the realm of the Spirit, those promises he will obligate himself to bring them to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.